is Lindy Norris, a two-time alumna from the Faculty of Arts, Class of 2007, and Asper School of Business, Class of 2009. And today, I'm delighted to interview a leader in business and community, Chris Couture, who is receiving a 2020 Distinguished Alumni Award in the Professional Achievement category. Chris, welcome and thank you for joining me today. Thanks, Lindy. Lindy, I'm delighted to be here. So today, Chris, I'd like to ask a few questions about the journey that brought you to where you are today, a very successful partner in PwC and somebody that we all look to for inspiration. You were a UM student just a few years ago when you first interviewed for PricewaterhouseCoopers, a firm that you would eventually become partner of. Can you take us back to that day and reflect on what it meant for you? Sure, Lindy. I think you're generous in saying it was just a few years ago, but that's okay. I'll go with that. <laughs> I might need to start a little bit before that, though. It was not my original plan that I would be an accountant. My first choice was a phys ed teacher, second an architect, and then a career in business. I didn't get accepted into phys ed and I had no creative artistic talent, so I joined the Faculty of Commerce and quickly learned what accounting was all about. And by my third year, I learned that firms come onto campus to interview students and that I'd better get ready. I interviewed with all the firms, felt very overwhelmed with how business-like, and I hate to say it, stuffy they seemed, until I met a guy named Todd Sinclair, my interviewer from PwC. I don't think he owned a suit jacket, and I'm almost certain he came to the interview on a motorcycle. Working for a professional service firm is all about chemistry. I think I hit it off with Todd, since PW made me an offer that I was thrilled to accept. I think the U of M recruitment service was so instrumental in preparing me for the process and providing guidance along the way to me and all other aspiring accountants. Um, they, they just do an amazing job. It, it's, it's certainly a, a great service that's provided and, they, and I know that they continue to provide that because I've benefited being a recruiter. Um, day one with the firm was really exciting. I joined with 15 other students who all, I think, with the exception of one or two, arrived 30 minutes early, very eager and excited to start. I still have my day one picture, and it's been a good reminder to me over the years when I think about how exciting it is for uni university grads to experience their first real job for many of them. So you've touched on your career journey and uh, that first day and that first interview was very impactful. And uh, when we think back to how you landed that job, networking plays a big role in that. So can you tell us how networking has played a role in your career? Sure. I think I've always been a bit of a closet introvert. And in my very early days at the U of M, it allowed me to start breaking down some of those barriers, especially mm -hmm. with all the group work required in the business school. So connecting with others started very early. Networking proved to be critical for the career choice that I chose. Mm -hmm. Professional services firms, you need to build a network, establish your, to establish your credentials, win new work and help others. The PwC brand gave a boost to all that, just given the recognition and power of that brand, it opened doors. However, once through, it was up to me to feed and nurture those relationships. And I think Winnipeg is an amazing networking community because we all care so deeply for our city and we want to see mm -hmm. it in all aspects. I met incredible people at my clients and through my volunteer activities. And it was often the client connections that led to great opportunities to volunteer, like in particular the U of M President's Campaign, where many of my clients served on that um, very important campaign, very successful important campaign. Um, so in my mind, uh, you know, it was the best outcome of networking, which was, you know, getting beyond my shyness, introverted tendencies, but able, being able to give back as well. Here, here, and uh, I, it's so remarkable to see the success of that campaign, and it must have been an incredible experience to participate. So you've, you've touched on the journey of your career, and you've also talked about what career development has been like. When you think about career planning for you, Compared to what it looks like today for a graduate or a soon-to-be graduate, what kind of advice might you give to a student graduate or um, even soon-to-be graduate in 2020? Well, as a PW lifer, you can argue that um, my path was one-dimensional linear. However, I've never stayed with the firm if that was the case. A fairly fundamental move mm -hmm. for me was when I chose to go on secondment to Australia following completion of my professional exams. 
It was a pretty big move at the time because I had an 18 month old and I'd be moving away from an extended family support and network. Hmm. Um, my time in Melbourne was just a career changer for me because it opened my eyes to endless opportunities of working for a global connected firm like PwC. I went on from my time in Melbourne to lead national and global accounts, serve on various global committees, learn about and appreciate new and different cultures, and develop mm -hmm. lasting relationships with people beyond my immediate borders. I think if I were to compare that with today's grads, they are much more aware of the world beyond the Canadian borders. They study internationally now and they travel mm -hmm. much more extensively than I did. And I think the other big difference is grads today are looking for opportunities to learn. They're looking for experiences from a variety of sources and they won't hesitate to change career paths to get that. I think that's really admirable and um, you know, I think something that is nurtured by the university, the University of Manitoba, they're, they're very instrumental in encouraging grads to look for those learning opportunities to, throughout their entire life beyond university. So I, I, you know, I think the advice I would have is, you know, start with a, with a great firm and, and a great organization but continue to be challenged and continue to look for new opportunities because they're out there and, and um, you know, even within the company that you join, you very much, very likely can find great opportunities beyond your day one job. Absolutely, so count on your team, but also count on yourself to continue the development and the challenge. Some very sage words of advice from Chris Couture, but Chris, when we think about your journey and you certainly are a Manitoba success story and someone that we all look to as a source of inspiration, what is the toughest lesson that you've learned about leadership throughout your journey? Lindy, there's so many lessons of leadership and you never stop learning them. You know, I, I still read and uh, look for ideas on, on different uh, aspects of leadership. But I think if I would have mm -hmm. to pick one, I think it's to not go, not go it alone. Seek advice and input from others, including members of your own team. Balance the inputs and make decisions. And if you ask someone for their input or perspective, be respectful and don't dismiss it because it's not aligned with your own thoughts. Mm -hmm. When I was the leader of our auto practice, I was you know, a female and fairly young at the time and became, for lack of a better word, the boss of, of more, to more senior male partners. And I felt I had something to prove. So I didn't often seek the advice that I should have or, or value the input that I received because I wanted to do it my way. And uh, I learned very quickly that that's not a, a great leadership uh, trait. So um, one, of the, one of the many lessons, I guess, uh, but there are many. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Well, these are all very good lessons for all of us to learn from and consider. And Chris, thank you again so much for your time and insight today. I encourage everyone to read more about Chris Couture and the other 2020 Distinguished Alumni recipients in the new digital edition of UM Today, the magazine.